Hey guys, so four months ago when I have just started my channel, I have shared a video on how you can use ChatGPT inside of UiPath Studio. Now, in the video, I said that I'm going to be showing how we can configure our parameters to get the best results. But since then, there were other projects that I made videos about, so this one got postponed. But today, we are going to see everything that you need to know about first the pricing of the models that we have in OpenAI, so you know the exact models that you should use for your use case. The second thing that we are going to see is the parameters and how we should configure them and what is the meaning of each parameter. And then the third thing is integration services and how easy it is to deploy ChatGPT inside of UiPath Studio. So we're gonna revisit that quickly so you can actually see it in action. That being said, let's jump to my screen. Okay, so quickly before jumping to the pricing of the models, I am going to be showing you the video where I have shown how we can integrate uh, ChatGPT with UiPath. It was, it was a quick video, so you can find it here. It was my second video ever. And it's basically using integration services, which is the easiest way. You don't need to copy paste code into a HTTP request. You only need to add it inside the integration services. So it's a great way to use ChatGPT for citizen developers and developers. That being said, let's go to the first part, which is the pricing. So the pricing have been changed, especially for the GPT 3.5, because before we had the same uh, amounts for the inputs and the outputs. So before it was 0.002 for the inputs and the outputs. Now it's different. So it got cheaper, which is a good news for us. And we only had the 4K context in the API. Now we have the 4K and the 16K, which is very good. And the 16K, of course, is going to be more expensive because it has more things to generate. Okay, that's good. So uh, when we say 0 0.0015 per 1K token, it doesn't really signify much for us because we want to know how much is it going to cost us per word and not per token. And if we come uh, here and see, we can see that 1000 tokens is actually equivalent to 750 words. So for example, uh, in here, uh, if we do the calculation and we try to see how many words are going to be generated in the input and the output for uh, $1, we're going to find, for example, I actually have made the calculation. We're going to see for the GPT 3.5 Turbo, for the 4K context, $1 is going to be equivalent to half million words. So we're going to pay $1 per half million words uh, for the inputs, of course. And the output is going to be roughly 375,000. That's approximation. It's not the exact number. But that's what you uh, should expect for $1 spent on the GPT 3.5. If you go to GPT 4, it's different. It's totally different. There is no 4K context. That's uh, that's first. And the second thing is, it is so much expensive, especially the output of the 32K context. It's, it's almost uh, 10, 10 to uh, 10,000 tokens. You're already at $1.2. So it's very expensive. So if we stay with the 8K uh, context, we're going to find that $1 is going to give you 25,000 words. And the output, $1 is going to give you 12,500 words. So you can see there's a big, big difference. There's a big gap between the words that's going to be given you by the GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. And that is logical when you compare between GPT-3.5 parameters, the number of parameters, you're going to find it's 154 billion parameters. When you search for GPT-4 parameters, you're going to find that it is 1.76 uh, trillion parameters. So it is so much more, so many more parameters. So it's, it, this is why. And when you start actually using them, you can see the difference. The difference is so clear. I'm not going to tell you about it. You guys probably already know it. It's it's huge difference in the benchmark of code or any other subjects. GPT-4, it just basically trumps any other model uh, out there. Okay, so now let's jump to the second part of our process where we are going to see the different configurations and the activities that we use in order to call OpenAI models inside of UiPath. 
So the first one is generate text completion. And the second one is generate chat completion. So before going and seeing the properties that we have here, we have to talk about the differences between these two activities. Okay, so generate text completion is for the older models and for the non-GPT models. So we're going to find text da Vinci, we're going to find Ada, we are going to find all of the other models that are for fine tuning and other goals, but not GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. As per the properties, they are the same between the generate text completion and the generate chat completion. So now let's go through them. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is the prompt. So this is the prompt and this is where basically we are going to give our prompt, much like we are just writing inside of the chat GPT website. Here we have the instruction. I will advise you to keep it empty. Instruction is, for example, if we want to set a tone or we want the model to act like a certain expert, for example, I would advise you to add it directly to the prompt. Don't add it to the instruction because the instruction is not as relied upon as the, uh, the, the, the prompt that we have here. Just leave it empty and you are good to go. Add everything to the prompt. The model name is going to be either GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. So uh, you're going to choose them. Before we didn't have GPT 4, now we have it, so that's good. The maximum number of tokens is basically the maximum number of tokens. It's uh, to stop the model from going over a certain number of tokens. Uh, the N is the number of completions. How many completions do we want the model to give us? So generally speaking, I just keep it as one since I just want one completion. Now let's go to the temperature. So the temperature is the property that we use to either make the model more or less creative. So a higher value is going to make it more creative and random since it's going to have an unconventional way of choosing the tokens. And the less value is going to be uh, basically giving it a less uh, creativity. So it's going to stick to the answers it already has. So we have more chance of getting the answer that we already expect if we already know the answer. The top P is, is kind of have the same goal, but instead of uh, dictating the, the way that the model is going to choose, meaning that because we have a vector, basically, imagine that the GPT 3.5 or the GPT 4 models are basically a space that we have, and they have a lot of words that are all over the space across a lot of dimensions. And then they are going to choose a certain way in order to choose every word and then it will give us the answer because that's how the models basically work so in the temperature when we are given a higher value it will choose like an unconventional way of the tokens so it will make it more random but in the top p we are basically decreasing the numbers of the tokens that it has so it will have less tokens to choose from so we are gonna make it more or less creative by restricting the number of tokens that it could choose from, not by choosing the path that it should take in order to give us the completion that we want. I know I'm going all nerdy about this, but I'm just trying to explain it as best as I can, because otherwise we can just say it's more or less creative without actually giving the image of what's happening. So temperature, more or less random, top P, more or less random, but in another way. Okay, so for the stream, this uh, is always going to be false in our case because this is basically means that is it going to be treating the, uh, the tokens in the real time or not? And since we don't have a website or any way to interact with it in real time, we are basically just clicking on debug or run. So the process sends the whole uh, sentence and then getting it back. This should always be false. It will never be true in our case in new iPad. So uh, don't worry about this. This is basically a real-time interaction. We don't use it. So the stop is a property that we use. If we want to stop the prompts, for example, from giving us more than uh, a number of items in a list. If we, for example, ask it to give us 10 uh, different programming languages, we can have 11 in here just to make sure that it's not going to give us more. And it's basically a further instruction and we can still add the instruction in here to make sure that it's not going to go over a certain limit. So yeah, that's what the stop is used for. 
Now, the presence penalty and the frequency penalty, they are also quite the same, but the difference between them, well, let's, let's define them first before seeing the difference. So the presence penalty is the penalty that we have once the word gets repeated. So we kind of penalize the model in order for it not to use the same token twice or the same word twice. So we force it into talking about uh, either other topics or use other words in order to describe a certain topic. So the higher the value, the higher the penalty. It's basically just stopping repetitiveness. The frequency penalty is almost the same thing, but imagine it's for uh, whole lines or whole sentences. It's not for one word, for every word, but for a whole line. So you have a less chance of having the same line or the same sentence twice in a completion. And the user is basically the user. So uh, the user is uh, an ID that you just give uh, to, to OpenAI. So if there are any abuses, they can detect it easily. We just leave it empty as well. And then we have the response either on a form of a generate chat completion or in a form of a string, which is the top generated text, which is going to be our out output that we can work with. Now let's see the last part where we're going to go to cloud.uipad.com just to remind you how we can use uh, the integration services. So here we're going to go to integration services. Just make sure that you either have the enterprise version, so you have the pro trial of the enterprise version, or you activate it by going to admin and go into licenses. And then here you will have an activate pro. You just use your business email and then you can activate it. Once you do that, just go to integration services and go to connectors and look for OpenAI. And here you're going to find OpenAI. And here we're going to click on connect to OpenAI. And we're going to have this page where we're going to place our API key that, of course, we're going to bring from platform.openai where we go to personal and then we go to view API keys. And then, of course, we create a new API key that we test, test one, for example, and then we copy this API key and then we put it inside the API key and that's it. We are basically connected and we can go to a UiPath and choose that connection that we have. So that's how we connect. It's really easy. We don't need to copy paste anything from the OpenAI website into the HTTP request. So yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.